Hello and welcome to the first uh, Dust Nostalgia Let's Play. I'm Anatoly, and today I'm going to play um, Goblins to one of my, my, I guess, one of my favorite uh, Dust games ever. Um, yeah, I have uh, discovered this game sometime in the early 90s, and this was one of the first adventure games I've uh, ever played. I mean, adventure game is put in my list, more like a puzzle game, but. Yeah, I've discovered adventure games late, and this was uh, one of the games that introduced me to them. I, I love it, I think it's great, it's amazing, I mean, look at this animation here, this game is from 1992, it's absolutely mind-blowing. I love most of the games made by this French developer, Cocktail Vision, and uh, yeah, oh, I love this bit with the fly. Um, this game is a pretty big step up from the first one, a uh, review of which we, you can see on my channel. Uh, now you only control two goblins, but you have no life bar, so it's easier to find solutions. <laughs> yeah, uh, and um, just in general, uh, I, I, the game is a lot more friendly and uh, a lot more entertaining, not as frustrating as the first game. Alright, here's your title screen. Okay, so, yeah, um, I'm actually speaking of a recording of this game, as I've discovered during my uh, streaming of uh, Woodruff and the Schnibble of Azimuth, uh, I cannot play games and talk at the same time. Uh, I just get too engrossed, especially in adventure games. Here's a copy protection, the game came with a, a chart of sorts. Alright, so, off we go. So we have two characters in this game, um, Fingus and uh, Winkle. And uh, the difference between the two is Fingus is sort of more social and smart and Winkle is a stronger one and he's also dumb, but because he's dumb and strong, he's also pretty brave, so um, there is that. And also uh, another big um, uh, addition to uh, the sort of uh, improvement of the first one is uh, the fact that you will be able to control both goblins at the same time. And a lot of puzzles are timed and based on that. And, uh, yeah. Uh, also inventory. Both uh, goblins have a shared inventory. And that, there we go. Make the two dudes laugh and you can steal their bottle. That's basically uh, the concept of most of the puzzles in this game. Where you just sort of do something so another goblin can grab it. There's a lot of those timed sort of... Um, uh, cooperative uh, work involved. In the demo version, I believe this statue was topless. Um, this is, by the way, the original uh, Cocktail Vision European release, the pre Sierra one, so it uh, version 102, I believe. So this might have some bugs. Um, I'm not sure, but also the, a few of the uh, dialogue options are. Uh, not dialogue options, just the text is, is slightly different. More on that later when it will come up. And here's like a good example of teamwork, right? Like, press a uh, button on the fountain, uh, fill up the bottle, you know. In the beginning, the game is actually kind of easy. Uh, a lot of people think these games are frustrating. I don't really find them frustrating, especially not the second one. Um, because, uh, although you do just have to try things on other things, and sometimes the solutions aren't very obvious. Uh, it, it's just, you know, there's not a lot of active objects per screen. And eventually things start to make sense, and it's fun to just check out stuff, you know, like just click on stuff. And, um, you know, see what happens. There's always some kind of amusing animation. You know, later in the game uh, is... Uh, uh, there are a few, like, really frustrating puzzles, but... Not so much here. Alright, so we need to uh, steal that guy's sausage. So here we are, the, we get the flowers, um, put some water in the flowers, and um, you'll get the uh, a flower that will make him fall asleep. I, I love these animations, like... Uh, all low resolution, very basic, cartoony stuff, but look, look, he's like, huh? <laughs> very cute. Still can steal his sausage, though, just like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, another addition uh, to, to the first game, uh, whatever goblins say, uh, especially while they talk, 
uh, to other characters is now subtitled on the bottom, so you can actually see what's going on in the conversation. It's pretty important. Uh, I, I am actually playing this game um, blind. I, it's one of my favorite games, so I know this game quite well. So um, you'll see me sort of go straight for the solutions uh, in most of us. Uh, it's very possible that uh, later in the game uh, I will be having some difficulties. Um, the game allows for three jokers to be used that you see in the interface up there. Uh, those will give you sort of solutions to the puzzles, but not... I, I mean, they're just flat out like solutions, but they're kind of... There's not enough in them, they're not very specific, and uh, um, there's only three you can use per game. And you can save scum. Uh, basically, the number is recorded permanently until you believe... Uh, uh, you begin. Per, per each new game, you you get three jokers, but... Uh, but yeah, so if you save restore, that won't help you. So we need to speak to this uh, wizard, Tazar. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, th this is why it's fun to play goblins, because stuff like this happens, you, you just sort of... Um, you just click on things and eventually you figure out what happens. I, I highly recommend you play If you've never played these games, please, instead of watching me play, just at least try to play them for yourself. They're available on uh, .ammo or good old games. Um, the package on good old games actually includes... Uh, both CD and uh, floppy versions of the game, and I encourage you to play floppy versions of two and three. Because uh, if you play CD versions of those, you'll lose um, wonderful music and gain uh, awful voiceovers. Uh, as far as the first game, they'll play the CD version. You get the 256 color graphics update, and um, you know some um, ambient music, which is very nice. Uh, this is a room where uh, originally I had some trouble with, I remember. Uh, well, being uh, it, it was a bit tough to figure out. Uh, often the problem with goblins is there is not enough clear indication uh, of what you need to accomplish. Um, uh, some screens, I mean, some screens, uh, some some levels uh, are just game switches to this specific one room and you need to do something to finish it and then we'll let you progress so that it's easier when the solution is just limited to like, ah, there we go. And those are the, the timed puzzles. You know, sometimes we have to be very quick. The Sometimes the solutions uh, in those single rooms are a bit more obvious but here you can travel between several locations, so it's not very clear uh, what what to do. But, I mean, in the end, it's all very forgivable. I, I think this game is cute, funny, and deserves to be played. Alright, back to game. This is like one of those uh, strange things, like water on teapot. Um, I mean, on the kettle, uh, you know, you get the key. And actually, here's one of my favorite things. Uh, Tazar and, uh, and Winkle don't get along, so here's this little scene that you can play out. You need to hit a uh, uh, cuckoo that holds a uh, cuckoo bird that, out of the clock that, her, that holds a key with a stone, but you can miss if you, if you time it properly, and this happens. <laughs> I love it. It's hilarious. Very cartoony. But those characters are lovable. I like goblins. Like both of them are, uh, 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 like dorky and adorable. I like Winkle more just because he is a, you know, uh, throughout the game he is. Uh, uh, I, I think you you get to like him just because of his sort of mischievous. They're fun characters, and I love those graphical designs. I mean, this whole game is pretty amazing. Yeah, so now we got the key to the cellar, so we can get some wine. And uh, all of that is... Uh, this first area is actually pretty easy. It consists of those, like, uh, three screens that you can visit uh, right off the bat. And that house, the Tsar's house, that um, uh, you need to solve a little bit of a puzzle to get to. 
uh, one of the, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I always love that uh, you need to get the the egg out of the chicken by just whacking it with a sausage over the head. Bam! Teamwork. Egg. Uh, another thing that sometimes can be frustrating, but it's sort of a uh, one of the mechanics in the game is both goblins will do different things while using the same stuff. Like, like see, like uh, if if uh, fingers sticks his hand in the hole. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, his hand comes out of a one hole, but if Winkle does it, uh, then it comes out of a different hole. And a, a lot of the puzzles are actually based on that, I mean, like, entering different passages and, uh, sort of, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we hit a lot of things with sausage in this game. Well, at least on this screen, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, here it is, a bit of a timed bit again, make it past the dog, but how do we get the other guy through? Like, if Winkle goes in here, he comes out here, and now we have a passage. Uh, this is really all you need to know about this game. Um, it, it's it's very simple to get into, like, I don't remember ever having any problems with it. And yes, I, I got stuck repeatedly when I was young and though. There was no internet or anything. Like it took me a while to to get through it. The, the game is actually relatively short if you know what to do. Um, uh, but it's still fun to to play. Like I, I forget all the solutions, and it's it's fun for me to sort of refigure them out. Yeah. So we look up the the giant. So now he demands food and drink. So we're gonna give him the sausage. We're gonna give him uh, the wine. And like right here, uh, I I didn't do it. But if you use you can only uh, sometimes the game sort of uh, uh, the game sort of pulls like a dick move on you. Uh, is um, uh, like Winkle is kind of unreliable sometimes. Like if if I would um, uh, use Winkle to uh, to crack an egg over the fire, he, instead of cracking it and uh, cooking it, he would just flat out eat it. So you would need to get another egg. And sometimes the game pulls that on you and it, it's a bit annoying and there are also sequences where you need to <laughs> repeat those uh, I like the design of this guy like huh BAM <laughs> uh, so yeah oh, yes like, I, I love his animations that's why I love Winkle so much he's probably my out of everything in the series he's my, he's my favorite goblin just because he just pulls stuff like that uh, he is like dorky and uh, uh, adorable. <laughs> and I don't know, something about his face. That smile. <laughs> that buck teeth. He is funny. He is a funny looking guy. Um, and yeah, like on this screen, uh, different, when you have different goblins enter the tower, they, um, they place uh, bombs in different spots. So that's how you, know, so you need to figure out. Uh, who goes where to to figure out what the sequence is to destroy all your obstacles? And uh, yeah, what was I talking about? I don't even remember anymore. Uh, but yeah. So here I need to we need to enter uh, the uh, the castle, but uh, we cannot do it conventionally. You can't go. Uh, you know, you have to bypass the guard. But even then, you can't really enter. Um, so you need to speak with that little dude up there, uh, the, the flying dude, um, to sort of uh, discover the secret, which is you need to throw some magic sand over the pit to create the bridge, to see an invisible bridge. Um, yeah, so the, the puzzles are pretty wacky, but, uh, but I mean, I love them. Uh, it's really fun to figure out those games. Uh, I, uh, the third game in the series to me, is, while clearly the best, also a lot more complicated. Uh, it, it's like the best game in the series, the third one, but my personal favorite is this one. Uh, just because to me it's it's easier, it's, it's a lot more fun. Sometimes I, I, I hear people um, say that like the second one is more complicated for me, and I really just don't see how the game is shorter. There's less objects. There's only two goblins to to control without switching characters. So it's it's really not that bad. And yes, there are some frustrating bits at the end. I'm sure I'll get to them, and you you'll see me. 
like uh, all these early, early bits. Um, here's a uh, never mind that. Here's the first see the nymph. Uh, she's naked, kind of, if you can see it. In the Sierra version, she's she's wearing a white bikini, like whatever the the three pixels that they could to, to, and also this. Yep, there we go. In the English version, he calls them. Uh, I mean, what that word originally meant is, you know, a pile of sticks. So they that that's what they change it to. He calls them a a pile of sticks. Um. Yeah, where was I? So yeah, I don't see how Goblins 2 could be more frustrating than Goblins 3. Uh, I really don't. Uh, Goblins 3 is a much bigger, larger game with complicated puzzles, scrolling rooms and everything. And uh, here it's straightforward. I eventually, just by trying everything on everything, you'll figure it out. Uh, yeah, so... And yeah, on occasion you'll see me like there's like I'm 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 stumbling a little bit just because I'm trying to remember what to do. And if uh, if I clearly don't remember what to do, you'll see you'll see that too. Like I'm just trying everything and everything. Also, from memory, I am trying to remember where all those like fun animations are, like something that I'm not doing correctly. Uh, you know, will result in some kind of a funny action. So I'm trying to show as many of those as I can, and of course I miss a few here and there. Um, uh, but uh, you know, uh, what you're gonna do? Uh, I'm gonna try to keep those episodes to about, uh, let's say, half hour uh, a piece, something like that, depending on how the game will uh, will uh, stretch. Uh, for how long uh, it shouldn't be that long. I mean the game is pretty easy, and I'm, I'm fairly confident in in my ability uh, to To finish the whole thing rather quickly All right, and see and yeah occasionally yep. I finally got on the stone uh, on the stone uh, Yeah, it, it sometimes it's a bit finicky, but hey, you know it works And when this happens this means I'm thinking <laughs> I love these animations. If you can hear some creaking on the on the soundtrack, this is uh, my outer door being just just the wind is just hitting it at a weird angle. I'm, I'm sitting here in a, in a snowy, windy New York, uh, you know, forty miles per hour winds today, so I, I don't think there's a. Uh, uh, Anything better I can be doing right now than just to sit in here playing uh, playing French DOS games. Very nice way to pass the time, not gonna lie, you should do that, totally. Okay. So, I, I hope you're paying attention, because... Uh, to what's going on, but yeah. Uh, yep, so here we go, and there's one of those dick moves. Try to use, uh, if uh, Winkle uses honey, which uh, I needed, uh, he just eats it. So now I have to go through the whole sequence again. So you have to uh, shake the branch, get the flower, and give the flower to, to the bees so they can make honey. In the beginning of the game, there's not that many parts, but uh, by the end, there there are some there are some bits um, where it, that becomes pretty frustrating. Like one of the levels, like if you screw up, you have to like repeat this just a giant uh, sort of sequence of events, and that could be frustrating. Yeah, I finally remember that I need to switch places. I was about to make almost the same mistake again. There's also one of those cases where using the same, doing the same thing with both goblins will result in the same thing. Like they'll both end over there. Usually, in this game, like if one goblin jumped jumped on the bee, he would have been would have been brought to one place. If a different goblin jumped on the bee, he would have brought him to a different place. But whatever. So the nymph uh, just showed us which mushroom to to give to the dude uh, behind. Uh, that door in the top left, uh, which is a funny animation, I didn't show. Uh, unfortunately, it's it's because 
yeah, the, the that guy up there, the wizard, is sort of a bully. So if you use uh, Fingus, who is who is weak, he sort of gets like. Uh, bullied, but uh, let's see how Win Winkle approaches that situation. <laughs> I like that. See, that's why I like Winkle. He's totally... He's pretty badass. Yeah, so, um... Uh, yeah, so the goblins have uh, shared uh, inventory, but... Um, if one goblin is holding uh, an item, uh, the other goblin will not be able to select it. Uh, if that makes sense. Uh, if you play that game, it makes perfect sense. Uh, the interface is really easy. Just mouse and uh, uh, both... Uh, uh, both mouse buttons, basically. Like, right mouse button either resets it back to the... To a normal cursor, like right mouse button opens inventory, you can select stuff and right there, and then if you press right mouse button again, it resets the, uh, the mouse pointer, mouse cursor, into the regular mode. And like right here, like this is not very, this is one of those screens where it's not very apparent what to do, like you, you need to make a potion for what you don't really know. Like, uh, it did a pretty good, uh, like, indication, like, oh, right now I see you can't make a potion because of that, uh, um, whatchamacallit. Oh, man, I forgot the word for the, 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 uh, the clothespin. Uh, uh, here it is, clothespin. Wow. Uh, on top of a machine, so you need to get there. So it's usually obvious what to do, like, what you need to do to get through the puzzles. But the goal of the screen itself is not entirely clear. Which they kind of fixed in Goblin 3. Goblin 3 is specific, has a screen specifically just to tell you what needs to happen. They fixed a lot in Goblin 3, actually. Goblin 3 is relatively, like, issue-free. It's just, uh, issues with that are... With that game is just, like, the, it's larger in size, so it, it's harder. Just by that, more items, bigger screens, scrolling screens, you can travel here, there, everywhere, and you have different companions uh, that you uh, acquire on your journey. So, yeah. Eh, Ryan, I don't think so, say now. Uh, well, I mean, I hope you're enjoying this. Uh, so, the, the purpose of this room is to actually get the uh, magic elixir made that uh, transports goblins into uh, a completely different uh, uh, sort of uh, on a different special screen with a rather frustrating puzzle and but in the interesting visual design um, here he like see like if you didn't know that like the way to find out uh, what the use of a trash can is is to actually screw up one so uh, the game will do that like the only uh, like I knew um, that needed to happen, that I needed to put one of the goblins on the, on top of the lid. But if you didn't know, you would have to repeat the whole thing uh, with the uh, with the bird and the meat again, which is pretty frustrating because that's a tiny bit. So uh, yeah, I'm being kind to this game because it's part of my uh, sort of childhood. But uh, honestly, it never really frustrated me this much. Like it's uh, I I got frustrated by other puzzles and adventure games more. I don't know why. Yeah, this is like, like an acid trip kind of level. Uh, and then, yeah, or you know, mushrooms, shrooms, psilocybin, psilocybin, whatever. Um, yeah, what was I talking about? Uh, I mean, this is not exactly an adventure game. It's more of a puzzle game. So I think. Uh, uh, sort of obtuse puzzles and bother me less than like sort of illogical puzzles in regular adventure games. And uh, then I don't know, sort of puzzles in games like Mist bother me again uh, a bit more than that. I don't know, I have a very soft. I forgive this game a lot. I don't know why. Uh, I don't find it particularly hard either. I, I know people do. And again, I don't know why. Alright, enough on that topic. Let's see the solution. Yeah, this is a really weird level. Uh, th th this is one of probably the first uh, 
Come on, that probably it's the first of those sort of specific screens. You sort of you do one thing, you have to figure out the solution to the entire screen, and then you never ever come back to it. And um, uh, it's all just self-contained. But like here, you you actually need to get a note from each of the players. And uh, I don't I don't know what the there is no indication that you have to do that. Um. Yeah, uh, and it's also pretty difficult because a lot of a lot of teamwork um, is involved uh, in in making those musicians play and then catching the notes themselves. Um, yeah, so each one of those musicians is activated in a different way. Like you pump uh, the saxophone player with a with a bicycle pump, and you know there you go. There's a note. And uh, you needed to make a sort of a fly catcher to catch the notes before. Uh, that took a while. This is probably the first sort of screen that people get stumped on. I remember being stumped on that uh, a bit, but eventually with trial and error, uh, you get to figure it out. This is a bit that's 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 hard to that's hard to guess because. You need to get both goblins to jump, and you need to just place one on top of the platform, and then the other one to use the spring underneath it, and then they'll both jump. That's not obvious, I, and I still think that, yeah, that's kind of a bad, um, I don't know, design decision. Uh, it's... Uh, I, I don't know, yeah, it, it's pretty... If I didn't know this game, especially those early levels, uh, so well, uh, I don't know. It, it would have been. It would have taken a while for me to get this. And yeah, I, I just completely screw up by by jumping off. Which here just involves me going back in the hole. Nothing too extreme. <laughs> yeah, this guy just agrees to play. This guy is easy. So now we got two nodes, and the only one left is the drummer. And the solution to his puzzle is actually uh, just scare him with the mosquito. So he just starts drumming, and uh, then we get our, uh, you know, we get our um, get our third note, and uh, then we can leave. I get my fly catcher ready. And that's it. There's a third note. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why we were getting that. Uh, well, actually, uh, I am. It's because on a different screen that you can go to, yeah, you needed the music to get things going. This is actually another one of those weird screens. Um, and again, I only know how to work it just because I've played it enough. But there's this bit where you hit the ball and the little boy steals the, the ball and... When you enter different houses, he sort of, uh, he uh, uh, avoids you, right? So, like, if I enter this house, um, yeah, see, that happens. And if you sort of uh, try to intercept him with the other goblin, um... Uh, he's, he just appears in a different house. So, the solution is actually to see which house he comes out of and and uh, yeah see like n now i know which house he like if uh yeah i need to find see like here it means if i go into that house on top i'll come out the one on the bottom so the solution is you you let winkle scare the kid out of that house and then have fingers come up right behind him and um there you go. Or you can use different goblin combinations, I think. And they also... I, I don't know, there's like... I think there's more than one solution. I'm not too sure it's been a long time, but this is how I saw it. It's the easiest, and I... I don't know, maybe I, I was dumb... Uh, for... <laughs> for... For not guessing faster. I remember that really stumped me back in the day. I don't know, I, I wasn't thinking... Fourth dimensionally or something, I don't know. So yeah, I know these early parts quite well, but sometimes I do screw up, like I missed the ball over here, 
but uh, I'm, I'm gonna sort of blaze through those levels that I that I know well. And then uh, you'll see me being stomped on the levels that I don't know so well. So be prepared to see my frustration. Yeah, so you need uh, you need to fix the clock. Uh, and we already have the melody. What you need, what you need to fix the clock is the melody. So we already collected it. So it all does kind of connect. Uh, how, however, like if I, you know, like I only talk to the to the burgermeister right now, and not before. But I, I ended up in the in the musician's mushroom room before the fact, so I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. So uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, and uh, I thought something was gonna happen, but but what you really need to do is just to talk to the guy inside the house. Some parts of this game really stand out to me, some other parts don't, and uh, some things I remember. Like here, it's like not as memorable as I was hoping just for, for fixing the clock. So now I got the sand, so now I can go back uh, to the trench. And um, yeah. Well, we're actually coming up on uh, more than half hour, so this is it for this first part of a playthrough. I'll, I'll continue from uh, inside the castle. Please leave me a comment uh, if you hate it or if you like it. Uh, if I talk too much, would you rather me talk uh, on the topic of the uh, actual, you know, of what's going on, on screen versus just like yapping over it? So uh, let me know, and um, I'll try to adjust. A little bit for for your entertainment. Also, more, more comment is uh, more content is coming to Dust Nostalgia soon, 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 soon. Promise, I promise again. I know I have before, but um, soon there's going to be more. Alrighty, so we made it uh, into inside the castle, and uh, this is it for this one. And uh, see, see you, see you soon. I love this level. Can't can't wait to play it. <laughs> Alright, see you later. Bye.